Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're doing alright. It's uh, Sunday morning, Easter Sunday. I woke up and decided I should do a lecture video. It's an Easter miracle. He has risen. Where's coffee? Um, oh, this is a sweatshirt that I've been wearing since 1993 <laughs> when I was roading for a band. It's very comfy for an Easter morning. Okay, so today we're going to talk about how sociologists do sociology, how we actually do sociology, why we call it a social scientist. So we'll talk, get into a little bit of the science, uh, ethics, and methodology issues around sociology. So let's do this, shall we? Um, so there are two, sort of two parts to this discussion about uh, sociology and how it's done. Man. Um, Hair. This coronavirus has been great for my hair. This is very professional. Um, the uh, the first the first part is theory. What we mean when we say theory, and the second part is uh, methodology. So let's take these sort of one by one when we say theory. What's a theory? A theory is uh, a statement about a relationship between something that we call variables. So first, before we even get a defining theory, we got to talk about variables. Variables are anything that varies. Varies. What varies? Um, the number of people who have been infected with the virus varies, right? It kind of goes up and goes up, but the new cases are leveling off, which is a good v measure of that variable. Uh, the amount of people going to college is a variable, but also the amount of people in the country is a variable. The amount of the temperature is a variable, right? The temperature varies. I mean, a variable is sort of anything that varies. How many people are graduating from high school is a great variable that we love to look at. How many people are murdering each other each year is a variable. But variables can be, don't have to be people. They could be the number of pigs that are slaughtered to make bacon every week. That's a random variable, but you should think about it if you love bacon and love pigs. Um, so we're talking about things that vary. vary. And what a theory is, so anything that varies, right? It could be a person count, like the number of people who speak Spanish in America varies. Uh, and it can be a non-person thing, like the number of hospitals in America can be a variable. What a, variable, what a theory does is uh, state some type of belief in a relationship among two or more variables. Uh, and the way that we basically, I've already drawn this up, the way that we sort of diagram a theory is the notion between variable A and variable B. There is some type of connection or some type of connection between these two. And what that connection is, the term that we use uh, for that connection is correlation. There is a correlation between these two variables, which means as one variable change, another variable changes. So, for example... <coughs> For example, um, here's one that I think you might uh, be interested in. The more, education is a variable. How much education do you get? Do you go to elementary school? Do you graduate from high school? Do you go to college and get your AA degree? Do you transfer and get your bachelor's degree? Do you get an advanced degree? The, so education varies, right? You can have a little bit of education or you can have a lot of education. Also, the amount of money that you make in your lifetime varies, right? You can make nothing. <laughs> nothing uh and you can make a whole bunch of money right you can be up there in bill gates zone so that's a big variable most of us are kind of closer to here than bill gates but um so one of the things that you might sort of know at least in the back of your head is that the more education that you get the more money you will probably make over the course of your lifetime right so that's i mean i think it's the reason that a lot of people come to pcc is they think Oh, you know, it's not just, gee, I want to learn the social construction of reality and think about all these things. I want to, I want a degree so I can make more money, so I can take care of my family, and so I can move up the ladder of American society, right? Right? That's why you're here? Some of you, anyway, I imagine. Um, so there is a correlation between these two variables, between education and economic success. Uh, and so the th that's the theory that, that these two are related. Um, it's not a complete theory, right? There are people who have tons of education and don't make a lot of money. <laughs> I won't name anybody that you might know. 
Uh, there are also people that have no education or very little education and have a ton of money. Have you ever heard of Kylie Jenner? Like, she's a 22-year-old billionaire. <sighs> Probably, like, dropped out of kindergarten, for all I can tell, based on what I know about Kylie Jenner. Uh, not a lot of education. But in general, in general, there is this correlation. So the, the connection, then, is... Uh, not only are they correlated, but are they causal? Is there a causal relationship? Is one variable causing a change in the other variables? A change in variable A causing a change in variable B. So let's say that A for our discussion here is uh, the amount of um, education that you have, and B is the amount of money that you make. And we would think that the arrow is going that way. We're trying to figure out the causal direction, right? The more education, right? You, you go to college and you get a degree. Maybe you get a law degree and so you can make lawyer money, right? So the more education that you make, the more money. But it's possible, it's possible that the arrow is going the other way, that B is causing the change in A. Because as you probably know, it takes money to get more education, right? The more education, if you want to go to Harvard, you probably need some money in the bank to do that. So you could say the more money that you have, the more education that you'll get, or the more money that your family has, the more education that you'll get. There's a lot of people without a lot of money, and that you know they're lucky to make it through high school, because everything beyond that is kind of a luxury. Um, they have to go work, uh, and so we're when we're talking about causations, we're also talking about what's called the causal direction. What is impacting what, and so. The, the variable that's causing the impact is called the independent variable. The independent variable. So if we think that uh, more education creates more money, education is the independent variable. And the other variable that's being impacted upon is the dependent variable. And so when we're talking about theories, that's often one of the starting point is what, what, what came first, the chicken or the egg? What's causing what? I'll give you a perfect example I usually give in the classroom. Um, there has been research that's shown that, and this is just for future post-pandemic classes, uh, where you sit in the classroom impacts your grade. The people that sit closer to the front of the class tend to get higher grades, remember classrooms, and people that sit in the back of the class tend to get lower grades. Not always, but in general, that's sort of the pattern that emerges. And at PCC, where we have relatively small classes, it's not that big of a deal. But if I, I've taught in classes where there has been a hundred or more students in these big, giant lecture halls, where you see the students in the front and the students in the back are just kind of a blur. So the question about that theory, two variables, where you sit in the class, how, cl how close you are to the professor, right? That can vary, close or far, and what your grade is, A or F, right? That can vary also. Uh, are correlated. We have data to show that these are correlated. The question is, which which direction is it, does it go? Is it the per people that sit in the front of the class get good grades because they sit in the front of the class, right? And they are, therefore, there's fewer distractions, there's fewer laptops, especially these days. They're, they're not looking at the back of somebody's head. And so, therefore, they're going to retain more of the information where the people that are sitting in the back of the classroom are... All kind, there's all kinds of distractions, and that maybe they might not hear, or it might be harder to kind of write down what the professor is writing on the chalkboard because they're so far away. So in that case, uh, where you sit is the independent variable impacting the dependent variable, your grade. But it could be that the good students naturally sit in the front, and the bad students sort of hang out in the back and hide in the back. And so it's actually... The type of student that you are, are you an A student or an F student, impacts where you sit in the classroom. I mentioned this one time when I was teaching a, a, in a big lecture hall at Portland State, and I had these three football players that were sitting in the very last row, right? They were just hiding out in the very last row, and I mentioned this correlation, uh, and they all immediately got up and moved down and sat in the front row, <laughs> which is perfect. They were, I'm, I bet their grades improved. I bet their grades improved. So we're interested in these correlations and the causal directions, the independent variable having an impact on the dependent variable. So let's keep that uh, in mind. Also, when we're talking about correlations, um, they can be positive or negative. So what do I mean by that? A positive correlation means as one variable goes up, 
So does the other variable. The closer you sit to this, the, the front of the class, the higher your grade goes. The more education that you get, the higher your in income goes. That there are positive correlations. Um, but there can also be negative correlations there, where one goes up and the other goes down, or one goes down and the other goes up. Just means negative, just means they're going in the opposite direction. So here's another one uh, that always uh, is interesting. And again, these are generalizations, they aren't always true. Um, the number of children that you have, right? You can have zero, one, two, a hundred, hundred. Uh, the number of children that you have, as that goes up, your economic success over the course of your lifetime goes down, right? Because kids are expensive. They just suck the blood out of you. So the more kids that you have, I mean, there's a, there's a contrary belief that if I have a bunch of kids, one of them will make it to the NBA or one of them will make it to Hollywood. And it's like a lottery and we'll win and we'll be... In reality, the more kids you have, the poorer you are. So as one goes up, the other goes down. But here's another thing to think about. This is another thing when we're talking about correlations. Um, is this concept of spurious correlations. Have you ever heard that term? It's a spurious correlation. What do I mean by that? A spurious correlation means uh, they're not causal at all. They're due to some other factor. So here's a classic example. Um... The crime rate goes up in the summer. So goes up in the summer, down in the winter, right? That's a variable, the amount of people that are murdering each other. The crime rate goes up in the summer. Also, um, the amount of uh, ice cream that's eaten goes up in the summertime. Right? More people eat ice cream in the summertime. I live right next to a place called Salt and Straw. It's a one block that direction if you want some overpriced but really delicious ice cream. And in the summertime, the line is around the block. So... Crime rate goes up in the summer, ice cream goes up in the summer. Is crime causing people to eat more ice cream? Is ice cream causing people to kill each other more? They're, they both go up. They're correlated. They are, we have data that show that they're correlated. Neither, right? Neither. It, they aren't causal at all. They are uh, connected to another variable, which is the temperature, right? The temperature causes the crime rate to go up because people are sweaty and just want to strangle each other. And the temperature goes up and people want to cool off and have some ice cream. So there's this really great phrase that's really important in sociology uh, is that correlation is not causation. Correlation, put that in your brain. Correlation is not causation. Just because two variables kind of go up and go down together or one goes up and the other goes down doesn't mean they're causal. doesn't mean they're actually having a direct impact on each other. I mean, one of my favorite ones is uh, states that have... States that are more conservative, that have a, a, a more of a red or Republican conservative voting record. Like Oregon is very blue for the most part. Oregon tends to vote more liberal or Democrat. But a state like Mississippi, super conservative, right? Super conservative. Uh, that's a variable, right? How states vote. Um, obesity rates, Right? Does a state have more people that are medically defined as obese, which is always controversial how we're defining obesity, social construction of reality on that one. But states that have higher obesity rates and states that have lower obesity rates, um, right? That's also a variable. Well, guess what? States that have a higher obesity rate also have a higher rate of voting conservative. States that have a lower obesity rate have a lower rate of voting conservative. California, for example, has a very low obesity rate and tends to vote very liberal. So is obesity causing conservatism? Is conservatism causing obesity? <laughs> Neither. It is a spurious correlation. It is, a, it is due to other factors like education and income that impact both obesity rates and voting patterns. So spurious correlation. Causation is not correlation. Sometimes those correlations are spurious. Why don't you throw that out at a cocktail party? People are like, hmm, it must be a social scientist. So um, so that's um, our first little part about uh, about theory. Uh, theory. So this is the thing about theory before we get into um, the next part. You, there's lots of theories. You can have theories about anything. Theories about correlations between variables. So what? So what? It doesn't matter until you do the second part. So remember the enlightenment. The first part is you have a rational idea. So a theory is a rational idea that there is a rational relationship between education and income. There is a rational theory about obesity and voting patterns, right? You can make a rational theory. But what's the second thing that you need? 